Solving quadratic equations. In this video, we're going to talk about the quadratic formula, but we're not going to have any imaginary solutions with me, Catherine. The quadratic formula is used to solve any quadratic equation, even those that we can factor. Standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Any equation we want to solve using the quadratic formula has to be in this form. And when it's in that form, we're going to use this formula. We're going to use this formula. <laughs> That's my kitty. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's look at one. Now that I fed the cat, let's look at an example. x squared plus 8x plus 15 equals 0. The first thing we have to do is make sure that it's in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. If it's not, you need to make it into the form. But for this one, it is. Some of you can see a, b, and c right away. But let me show you how to find it. A is 1, B is 8, and C is 15. Now we're going to substitute that into the formula. So all of the A's are 1, the B's are 8, and then finally the only C is 15. I just rewrote it so it's easier to see. The next step is to simplify. 8 squared is 64. 4 times 1 times 15 is 60. So we'll have 64 minus 60. If we keep simplifying, 64 minus 60 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 8 is just negative 8. So now we have negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2. The square root of 4 is 2. Now we can separate it into two answers. Negative 8 plus 2 over 2, which is negative 6 over 2, which reduces to negative 3. We call this an exact answer. In the second one, negative 8 minus 2 over 2, which is negative 10 over 2, which gives us negative 5. And that's also an exact answer. And I'll explain that here in a minute. So the solutions for x squared plus 8x plus 15 are negative 3 and negative 5. Let's look at this one. First, we have to make sure it's in the correct form, the standard form, and it is. a is going to be 2, b is negative 1, and c is negative 5. Let's substitute that into the formula. We put 2 in for a's, negative 1 in for b's, and then negative 5 into the 1c. I just rewrote it so it's a little easier to see. The next step, simplify. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 2 times negative 5 is positive 40. And then the bottom we still have 2 times 2. 1 plus 40 is 41, and 2 times 2 is 4. Now, when we simplified it again, I want you to look at the negative, negative 1. Negative, negative 1 gives us a positive. So that's how I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 41 over 4. The next step is to ask ourselves, is there a perfect square in 41? And no, there isn't. So now we're going to split it up into our two answers. 1 plus the square root of 41 over 4. And we call that the exact answer and then 1 minus the square root of 41 over 4. Now many textbooks and online homework are going to ask you to round. For this one, we're going to round to the nearest ten thousandths. You need to use your calculator for this one. And I get approximately 1.8508 for the first one, and in the second one, negative 1.3508. The reason these are not considered exact answers is because they're rounded. I would like you to try this one. Pause the video, solve, and then press play to check. Our first step is to make sure that it's in standard form, and it is. 
A is 4, B is 8, and C is 1. The next step I did was substitute A, B, and C. Then A squared is 64, make it to 4 times 4 times 1 is negative 16. 64 minus 16 is 48, 2 times 4 is 8. Just like we asked ourselves in the last question, we need to ask ourselves, is there a perfect square in 48? So we want to reduce the square root. Some of you will say, hey, 4 is in it, and you're right. And actually, there's two 4s in 48. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 4 is 2, and then we have the square root of 3. That gives us 4, the square root of 3. Now when we rewrite it, instead of writing the square root of 48, we're going to write 4, the square root of 3. Now when we look at this, I'm looking at the negative 8, the 4, and the 8. The negative 8 and the 4 on the top, I know I can factor out a 4. So that's going to give us 4 times negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 all over 8. The 4 and 8 are going to cancel, which gives us the exact answer of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Like I said before, a lot of books are going to ask you to round. I decided to round these to the nearest ten thousands. And yes, you need to use a calculator. The rounded answer I get is negative 1.8660 and negative 0 0.1340. I would like you to try this one also. You're going to pause the video, solve, and then press play to check. And let's see how you did. First we have to make sure it's in standard form, and it is. A is 4, B is 1, and C is negative 2. Now we're going to substitute those numbers in and simplify. 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 4 times negative 2 is positive 32. 1 plus 32 is 33, 2 times 4 is 8. The next step is to ask ourselves. Next, we have to ask ourselves, can I reduce the square root of 33? And no, we can't. So we're going to end up with two answers right away. Negative 1 plus the square root of 33 over 8, and negative 1 minus the square root of 33 over 8. These are considered our exact answers. But as I said before, many books are going to ask you to round it. You need to use your calculator, and I get 0 0.59307 and negative 0 0.84307. Here's the last practice for you. You're going to pause the video, solve, and then press play to check. The first thing we always have to do is make sure that it's in standard form, and it is. A is 1 b is negative 5, and c is 3. Let's substitute those in, and then we're going to simplify. Negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times 1 times 3 is negative 12. Negative negative 5 is the positive 5, so that's how I get that. 25 minus 12 is 13, and 2 times 1 is 2. Is there a perfect square in 13? Nope, so we can go right away to our exact answers x equals 5 plus the square root of 13 over 2, and x equals 5 minus the square root of 13 over 2. And as I said before, a lot of books and online programs are going to ask you to round. You do need to use your calculator for this. I get 4.3028 and negative 0.6972. Cool. If you like the video, pin me to Pinterest. The only way to get good at using the quadratic formula is to practice, practice, practice. Make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss the next exciting episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.